The F-4 Phantom is one of the most recognizable and iconic aircraft in the history of military aviation. Its famous durability, speed, and effectiveness as a combat fighter make it one of the most widely used military jets in history. Known to many as the deadliest fighter of the Vietnam War or Israel's sledgehammer in the Yom Kippur War, the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II is one of the Cold War's most recognizable and well-known aircraft, seeing over 36 years of service across the Vietnam Yom Kippur and Iran-Iraq wars, and in Operation Desert Storm operating for 12 nations, four of which still maintain the platform in service to this day. As a two-seat twin-engined multi-role aircraft, is it really capable of nearly anything? Join us in today's video as we reveal why you need to respect the F-4 Phantom II fighter. Originally designed for the United States Navy, the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II is a twin-engine, tandem two-seat, all-weather, long-range, supersonic jet interceptor and fighter bomber. It was first used by the Navy in 1960, and due to its great adaptability, it was later adopted by the United States Marine Corps and U.S. Air Force. By the middle of the 1960s, it had grown to be a significant component of both services' air forces, with the U.S. Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps flying the Phantom II. In air shows around the world, the F-4 was flown by the U.S. Navy's Blue Angels and the Air Force Thunderbirds flight demonstration teams. The fighter also flew with the air forces of 11 allied countries, including Australia, Japan, South Korea, Spain, Germany, Greece, Israel, Egypt, Iran, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. The F-4 has been flying for so long that Iran is no longer a U.S. ally. In 1990, West Germany joined forces with East Germany, marking a significant moment in history. The iconic F-4 Phantom the Siku with a total production of 5,195 units concluding in 1985, played a pivotal role in various conflicts. Notably, it became a symbol of strength during the Vietnam War and served alongside the Israeli Air Force during the intense 1973 Yom Kippur War. Additionally, the F-4 made its mark in the Iran-Iraq War from 1980 to 1988, showcasing its versatility across different battlefields. The F-4 boasts an impressive combat record, with 306 enemy aircraft shot down compared to 106 Phantoms lost, along with 545 jets downed by ground fire. As time progressed, the F-4 Phantom gradually phased out of the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps. Its role was succeeded by formidable aircraft like the F-14 Tomcat, F-A-18 Hornet, F-15 Eagle, and F-16 Fighting Falcon. Although the F-4 stopped service in 1996, a good number of them continued service until 2016, taking on the role of QF-4 unmanned target drones. In the present day, the F-4 is still soaring through the skies, with only Iran, Japan, South Korea, Greece, and Turkey operating these jets. However, there are plans in motion for replacement within a decade for all these countries, except Iran, signaling the evolution of military aviation. Over half of the nations that once operated the F-4 are now acquiring the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, either as a direct or indirect replacement. However, the F-4's performance in air-to-air -air combat during the Vietnam War, when compared to the invincible F-15 Eagle, which remains undefeated in aerial battles, has rendered the F-4 with the reputation of a heavy-duty aircraft, heavily dependent on sheer engine power and outdated weaponry. When the F-4 came out in 1958, it was a revolutionary design, one that went on to set several aviation records. Despite its 30,000 pounds unloaded weight, it had an excellent thrust thanks to its enormous J-79 twin engines, propelling the heavy airframe at a speed over two times the speed of at a maximum speed of 1,473 miles per hour. Weighing in at 30,000 pounds unloaded, its enormous J-79 twin engines gave and still give the aircraft excellent thrust. 
propelling the heavy airframe over twice the speed of sound at a maximum speed. In its early days, the Phantom displayed remarkable capabilities, capable of carrying up to 18,000 pounds of munitions, which was three times the payload of the massive B-17 bombers from World War II. Additionally, the Phantom featured a unique setup where the weapons officer in the rear seat took charge of operating the plane's advanced radar, communication, and weapon systems, allowing the pilot to concentrate solely on flying the aircraft. As if that wasn't enough, the F-4 also came in both ground and carrier base models inserted in the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marines, being the only other frontline aircraft to fight in all three services before and since the F-35. Despite these magnificent feats, the Phantom still suffered when it came up against lighter MiG-17 and MiG-21 fighters of the North Vietnamese Air Force in 1965. In the Korean War, the U.S. dominated the air, shooting down six to ten enemy planes for every one of their losses. But in Vietnam, things were tougher, with a ratio closer to two enemy planes for each U.S. plane lost, counting all aircraft types, not just the Phantom. The main issue with the F-4 was that it didn't have a cannon. Instead, it relied on new air-to-air -air missiles like the AIM-7 Sparrow, AIM-9 Sidewinder, and AIM-4 Falcon. Unfortunately, early on, the Air Force didn't realize these missiles weren't very good at the time. Studies showed that a staggering 45% of Vietnam-era AIM-7S and 37% of AIM-9SS failed to either launch or lock on to their target, and after evasive maneuvers, the probability of making a kill drastically went down to 8% and 15% respectively. The Falcon missiles turned out to be even worse, and the Pentagon eventually took them out of service. The North Vietnamese MiGs, armed with both cannons and missiles on the MiG-21, could outmaneuver the heavier F-4 despite its speed, because the F-4 wasn't particularly agile. Making it even more challenging, American pilots weren't trained for close-range dogfights because the Air Force had assumed that air-to-air -air battles would happen at long range with missiles, but they faced a different reality in Vietnam. In addition, the Phantom's J-79 engines produced thick black smoke, which in combination with its very large size made it easier to be spotted by enemy pilots even from a distance. On the other hand, the rules of engagement in Vietnam prohibited U.S. pilots from shooting at unidentified targets beyond visual range, further crippling the advantages of the missiles. However, with the drastic improvement of air-to-air -air missile technology, the F-4's problems began to quickly fade away with later versions of the Sparrow and Sidewinder. Eventually, the Air Force upgraded all of its F-4Es with wing slats that significantly improved maneuverability at a slight cost in speed. New J-79 engines even dealt with the problem of the F-4's visible black smoke making it less visible to enemies and improving on its close-range battle capabilities. On the other hand, the Navy saw the issue differently, thinking it was more about a lack of training in air combat maneuvers. In 1968, they introduced the Top Gun training program which Navy pilots went through, achieving an impressive superkill ratio over Vietnam, securing 40 victories while losing only seven planes in air-to-air -air combat. In comparison, the Air Force's Phantoms achieved 107 air-to-air -air kills but lost 33 to MiGs, and the Marine Corps claimed three victories. 474 Phantoms across all services were taken down by gunfire, as the heavy fighter did double duty serving as ground attack aircraft. Two versions of the Phantom that stood out were the RF, four photo reconnaissance plane which was designed for speed, and the Wild Weasel, which specialized in attacking enemy surface-to-air missile defenses. The last time the American Air Force used the Phantom in combat was during Operation Desert Storm, before retiring it in 1996. The Pentagon later repurposed some as QF-4 target practice drones. Despite its retirement in the U.S., the Phantom maintained a global presence. 
In Israeli service, it played a crucial role against the Egyptian and Syrian air forces, achieving 116 air-to-air -air kills in 1969 during the War of Attrition. In a notable engagement on the first day of the Yom Kippur War in 1973, 28 Egyptian MiGs launched an attack over an airbase. With just two Phantoms scrambling in defense, they managed to shoot down seven of the attackers. The primary foes for Israeli Phantoms during these campaigns were the Arab surface-to-air missile batteries, which were responsible for the majority of the 36 Israeli Phantoms that were lost in action. The swan song of the Israeli Phantom Force occurred during Israel's 1982 intervention in the War of Lebanon. In an operation named Mole Cricket 19, Phantoms, along with the new F-15S and F-16S, successfully eliminated all 30 Syrian SAM batteries in the Baqa Valley. Remarkably, they achieved this without losing a single plane in a day. Before the Iranian Revolution, Iran received 225 F-4S from the United States. These aircraft became the backbone of the Iranian fighter force during the lengthy nine-year war with Iraq. The Phantom reportedly performed admirably against Iraqi MiGs and conducted several successful long-range raids on Iraqi airfields. However, the exact number of air-to-air -air kills during these engagements remains a topic of dispute. The Phantoms still see service, but it's somewhat of an anomaly, just compare it to the F-15 Eagle. The F-15, which entered service in 1975, is emblematic of a fourth-generation fighter aircraft that remained the mainstay of the modern air forces today. The F-15 is also deliberately unlike the F-4. It's a heavy twin-engine two-seat fighter and an agile dogfighter. When the F-15 and the lighter F-16 saw their first major action over Lebanon in 1982, they shot down more than 80 Syrian third-generation MiGs at no loss. The supremacy of the fourth generation was confirmed again in the Gulf War, in which Iraqi fighters shot down only one fourth-generation fighter, an F-18 Hornet, for the loss of 33 of their third-generation aircraft. Now you might wonder how the F-4 could keep up in this new environment. Well, with the integration of the same modern hardware used in the fourth generation, the aircraft could cope. The Phantoms flown by the Turkish and Greek Air Forces both have modern pulse Doppler radars, which give the F-4 look-down shoot-down capabilities. In the past, high-flying radars faced challenges detecting low-flying aircraft due to the radar waves bouncing off the ground, creating a cluttering effect. However, with the introduction of active Doppler radar, this issue has been effectively addressed. Modern F-4S can employ a comprehensive range of advanced ordnance, including the AIM-120C AMR AAM air-to-air -air missile with an impressive range of 65 miles. They can also deploy precision-guided munitions like the AGM-65 Maverick, as well as the latest models of Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles. In the 1980s, the Israelis invented the technique of Phantom Upgrades, with the Phantom 2000 Kurnus, also known as the Sledgehammer. Even after leaving Israeli service in 2004, Israeli companies continued to modernize Greece's 41-piece Ikaros Phantoms by giving them AMR-AAM missile firing capability and ANPG-65 pulse Doppler radars. The Turkish Air Force's Terminator 2020, which has extra wing strikes for better maneuverability, is the result of Israeli upgrades. 20 kilometers of wiring have been replaced in the 2020s, resulting in a net weight loss of 1,600 pounds. The Turkish versions also feature a diverse array of modern sensors and electronics. Like other modern F-4S, they can deploy advanced ordnance such as paveway bombs, anti-radar missiles, and 3,000-pound Pupai missiles with a range of 48 miles. The Terminators are primarily ground attack planes with some notoriety. They bombed Kurdish PKK fighters in Turkey and Iraq in 2015 and 2016. An RF-4 reconnaissance plane was shot down over Syria in 2012 and three F-4S crashed in 2015, earning them the nickname 
flying coffins in the Turkish media. In 2009, the Iranian Air Force declared that it was flying six RF-4S, 76 F-4Ds, and six E's. According to reports, Tehran altered the aircraft so they could fire anti-shipping and air-to-ground missiles made by China or Russia. They continue to use AIM-7 Sparrows that they obtained secondhand. Similarly, Iran depends on homemade and illicit spare parts for its F-4S, just like its F-14 Tomcats. December 2014 saw Iranian phantoms bomb Islamic State targets in the Diyala province of Iraq, continually playing cat-and-mouse games with the U.S. patrols and drones over the Persian Gulf. But are souped-up F-4S equal to fourth-generation fighters? While none of these 21th century phantoms have engaged in air-to-air -air combat, F-4 phantoms have participated in non-lethal dogfights with Greek F-16s on multiple occasions. They also had encounters with Chinese Su-27S during a 2010 exercise. According to some reports on the internet, they performed quite well, achieving a noteworthy 1 to 8 ratio. Comparing videos of F-4S with winged slats, executing a tight 180 degree turn to F, 15s doing the same maneuver, reveals a similar completion time of around 7 to 8 seconds for both, despite the F-15 supposedly being more maneuverable. This doesn't necessarily prove that the upgraded F-4S are superior to later designs, but it does demonstrate their capability to hold their own when compared to fourth-generation fighters. Over time, the Phantom has showcased versatility and adaptability. Those who witnessed its first flight in 1958 likely couldn't have imagined that it would remain on the front line of service nearly 60 years later. But what were the biggest problems that the F-4 Phantom faced? With such a rapid development cycle, it's natural that the F-4 Phantom experienced teething issues. Some early aircraft suffered from leaks in their internal wing-mounted fuel tanks that required resealing after each flight. There were problems with aileron control cylinders, electrical connectors, and engine compartment fires, and 85 F-4S developed cracks in outer wing ribs and stringers, possibly due to being overstressed in dogfights with smaller, more maneuverable fighters, a task for which it wasn't really originally designed. The F-4's powerful General Electric J-79 engines advertising its arrival with a smoke trail that is visible 25 miles away was a not insignificant downside that would take nearly 20 years to engineer out. Another nickname for the Phantom was Old Smokey. Luckily, 25 miles was about the effective kill range of its radar system for its guided air-to-air -air missiles, so the F-4 could still kill you before you even knew it was there. As earlier stated, those fancy new avionics weren't without issues either. As Aviation Geek Club quotes Marine Corps F-4 R. Ryo Randy Rains, he stated that they were always broken. Rains pointed out another potentially explosive issue, saying that for a craft designed as an interceptor, the structure of the plane had a hard time handling the high Gs of one-on-one -on -one combat. Then there was the bleed air system that bled hot exhaust gas over the leading and trailing edge of the wing when the flaps were down. That system was a continuous problem. Picture hot exhaust leaking next to a wing full of jet fuel. He said they came pretty close to losing a plane because the crew didn't recognize the problem and didn't shut the valve controlling the system off. Despite these flaws, the F-4 proved capable and reliable in combat and became a favorite of many pilots and Rios. Having said all of that, Rain still claimed that he loved the F-4, and it was a great plane that always brought you home. Former Phantom pilot John Cheshire also said it was an easy fighter to fly. However, because of its wide-turning radius, it took some extra instruction on how to defeat tight-turning enemy aircraft. Aside from its huge preference among pilots, it was a plane that was a beauty in the eyes of the pilots who flew it. Despite the F-4 has been called several names such as Ugly, the Flying Anvil, the Flying Brick, the Iron Pig, Double Ugly, and even been described as looking like a mean rat compared to some other airplanes of its era, the F-4's lines have stood the test of time, and it is a beautiful aircraft in the eyes of many.
To the eyes of pilots, it's one of the coolest looking jet fighters the US has ever produced, despite its considerable 58-foot length and 38-foot wingspan. The design features of the Phantom evoke a blend of historical and futuristic elements. The upswept wing end sections draw inspiration from the radial-engined F-4U Corsair gullwing fighter of WW2, providing a nostalgic touch. Meanwhile, its extended angular vertical stabilizer and downswept horizontal stabilizers give it a futuristic appearance resembling spacecraft from Battlestar Galactica. Interestingly, the decision to incorporate upswept wingtips wasn't just for aesthetics. Wind tunnel testing revealed that for stability, the wings needed to have a 5-degree upsweep, known as dihedral in engineering terms. To achieve this without a major redesign of the titanium central fuselage section, a clever McDonnell engineer proposed upsweeping the wingtips by 12 degrees. This adjustment resulted in the overall average dihedral of the wings being the required 5 degrees, proving to be a successful and efficient solution. The streamlined, aggressive-looking canopy, the powerful two huge engines with some wings added design, the dog-toothed leading wing edges with their upswept tips, intersecting visually along the long axis with the sharply anhedral down-angled rear stabilizers. It all just looks badass. The entire design conveys speed, sharp pointy edges, and death to anyone who gets too close. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.